Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of Cloud Tool Time. My name is Brian King. I am the community manager for the Eclipse Cloud DevTools Working Group. And today, I'm very, very happy to introduce uh, Jordan uh, Pavlov. Uh, he is a senior developer at SAP Labs Bulgaria with seven uh, over seven years experience with cloud computing technologies. Uh, currently, he's focused on Kube, uh, the Kubernetes framework for building enterprise grade cloud platform at SAP. Um, he's one of the project leads and committers on the Eclipse uh, Dirigible project uh, since the inception of the project. Uh, and lately, he is driving the adoption of Eclipse Dirigible in the community and is promoting the low code slash no code development model. Um, so your done today is going to give us an introduction to Eclipse Sturgeable. So take it away, you're done. Uh, hi, hi, Brian. Thank you for the nice words. So I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so let's start with the presentation. And uh, by the way, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation or the demo, just go ahead and ask me. I'm big, I'll be very happy to answer them. So uh, the presentation will be a quick one and it will be more of a demo session, actually. So let's get started. So uh, about Eclipse Dirigible, actually it is almost 10 years since the initial inception, the internal inception in SAP. And it is uh, seven years since it was open sourced and six years since it is part of the Eclipse family. Uh, what Eclipse Dirigible is, it is uh, basically a tool or a platform which uh, enables developers to build uh, fast uh, prototypes and with uh, less effort and less bo bo boilerplate code. Mm, it uh, relies on the system development experience, which we will see in the demo. And uh, we are using heavily JavaScript, uh, which is actually running on GraalVM. So as you heard GraalVM, yes, it is Java-based, the whole thing. It is not Node.js. Uh, we rely heavily also on another concept, which is about uh, declarative content. So most of the artifacts, which we are going to see in a few minutes, are uh, really um, JSON-based, and they can be easily edited, even without editors. Um, as I said, it is kind of a platform, so it provides uh, both web ID and a runtime. The prime tar target is the cloud, but uh, actually it can also run locally, and we're going to see that in a minute. It is uh, both for um, hardcore developers, uh, which uh, want to get their hands dirty and uh, start writing some code on a, really on a low level. So we provide a set of uh, standardized APIs. We have some editors and modules. And Tivan, you can build your own dirigible uh, from a Maven models, and you can provide uh, your Java facade for that, which is also very interesting. It is also for uh, local and local developers. So the guys that want to really sketch up something quickly, and uh, they want to do it with uh, less code or, or even more without any code at all. So we have this entity domain modeling concept and business process modeling concept. Okay. So where you can find the project, you can go to dirigible.io or at GitHub under the Eclipse Foundation under the Eclipse Foundation slash dirigible. So let's go to the first link. Okay, so this is actually the main site. From here, you can find all the relative information about Dirigible, the, the releases can be found here, also the GitHub page. And uh, by the way, if you like, really like the session, please go here and give us a star. We really appreciate that. Okay, 
So we have uh, these uh, two interesting buttons here. We have try it out. So it's kind of a trial trial version and it provides an anonymous access. So we can just log in with a nickname. It doesn't require any authentication really. So the goal is here to have a very minimal barrier for anyone who would want to give a try to the dirigible. You can go ahead and try it or you can start with the getting started. Of course, we have a lot of blogs and content here which you can could find useful. Okay, so switching back to the presentation. <coughs> okay. Uh, so for the getting started, actually what we are going to do, we are going to uh, set up a locally dirigible uh, through a docking container. And uh, there are also a few other ways to set up dirigible, which I will explain lately. And we are going to create one Hello World project and then extend it a bit. Okay. So I think the next step is really the demo. Yes. And uh, by the way, you can find the whole demo content published on this uh, GitHub link. So all of this, uh, I hope it will be shared afterwards the link to the presentation and the uh, content to the demo. Okay, so switching back to the site. This is our starting point. We'll go to the getting started bu button. Okay, and here you can really see and uh, choose different uh, setup options, uh, go through the tutorial step by step. Uh, but as I already know the steps, I'm going to jump start to the setup. As, as, and as you can see, it has several setups available. You can set up it locally on, top, on Tomcat or Docker. You can set up it in the cloud on Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes or even Kima, which is also another interesting uh, SAP open source project. And of course, as any hmm, modern project, it has a set of environment variables which can be provided during the runtime. Okay, so going back to the Docker setup. So the first step obviously is to pull the Docker image and I've already done that to spend some time. And then <coughs> I can just, with that command, I can just switch to my terminal and run it. And uh, by the way, here it is specified the, the latest version which uh, means that the latest uh, Docker image will be download, downloaded. But if you go to the Docker Hub link provided up here, and if you search for the image name, we have a lot of images, as you can see here in the bottom. But if you go and search for dirigible slash all, You can see that we have uh, several releases and instead of using the, the latest version, you can, for example, use uh, 5.9.1, which is actually the latest released version. But for the sake of the demo, I'll stick with the latest version. Okay. I'm going to hit enter and the uh, Docker will spin up a container on my machine. <coughs> And after a few, few seconds, it should be accessible. So I can switch back to the help and see what is the next step. So this is uh, the location where the dirigible is running right now. So I can click on it. Okay, and it says that the default username and password for this uh, deployment for localhost are dirigible slash dirigible. And here they are. So <clears throat> this is the actually the dirigible ID. So it looks kind of uh, Visual Studio, you could say. Actually, we have a dark theme, which will much more look like the Visual Studio, if you prefer. But I'm going to stick with the light one. Okay, so what I can do if this is my first time that I'm hitting Eclipse Dirigible. Uh, so in this part of the screen, there is a lot of text and some uh, boxes. So I can maybe give a 
give it a try. So it says hello world. So this will be kind of template and it's asking for a workspace. So this will be the default workspace and some pr project name, maybe what could it be? Let's say cloud to time 2021. And the name of the file will be hello world. Okay, so let's generate it. Okay, so let's see what I have here. <clears throat> I have this uh, text here. It looks like a bit Java, a bit Node.js, but nothing uh, alike. Uh, so let's see, maybe if I go here and say hello uh, to time 2021 and then press uh, Control S or Command S for OS Hex. Oops, okay, so something happened here in the bottom. And actually, this is the in-system development experience. So the prime target for Dirigible is to be deployed on a cloud and to be configured and bound to a specific set of services, for example, database, um, messaging service, mail service, and whatnot. And after that, all of that services should be really easily consumable through the set of APIs that we provide. So as you can see, this is the response API. So let's see what else does the response API has. So if I click uh, control space, I can see the list of all methods that this API is exposing. Or alternatively, if I go to the help and to the help portal here, Actually, I'm going to use that uh, in my demo also. And if I go to the API, I can see the list of all APIs that Dirigible provides as of now. So here we have uh, some database APIs, uh, even documents and so on. Okay. So, so far so good. So I have a editor and I have a this preview here in the bottom. What else do I have? At the left part of the screen, I have these um, perspectives that we call. And the first one is actually a Git perspective. So let's give it a quick try. And here is my project so I can actually share it. So let's give it a try. I'll go to my GitHub. Profile and I'm going to create new repository. Okay, so this is empty. Okay, I can copy the URL of the repository, switch back to the git perspective, click share, provide the repository name, the branch name, some initial commits, and then the username will be my username for GitHub and the email that I'm using for signing to GitHub. So after a bit, uh, the project should be shared in GitHub. Okay, so as you saw, the icon of the project changed to Git and uh, it has now uh, branches and a working tree. So you can actually have multiple projects shared to the same Git repository. And if I refresh the Git repository, I'm going to see that uh, my first commit happened. Okay, that's perfect. So it's provide this basic functionality. Um, for the next part, I'm going to edit a little bit my hell world. So it will be like that. I'm going to create one variable, which will be message. Okay, and we'll print the same message here. So it should work in the same way, yes. <clears throat> but if I switch to the debug perspective, which is the next one at the bottom, <clears throat> I'll be able to debug my code actually. And uh, in Dirigible, we've integrated the Chrome DevTools. So what I can do, I can uh, put a breakpoint, I can, uh, watch right here, all of them are empty and defined, but I can watch uh, really the, the variables. So it should be a message like that, or I can even go to the console and say message, okay, this is like this, 
Ese... That. So my variable change it and I can resume the execution and I can see the result in the preview, in the debug, debug preview tab. Okay, so this is clear, I can debug your code. The next one is uh, interesting actually. So you could say so far I haven't seen anything different from Node.js, you can debug in Node.js, you can write your code in Node.js, you can run it on a live server and see the result. Yeah, that's true. That's totally true. Uh, but here in the Dirigible, as I said, uh, we're providing really tools and ways for the developers to, and we want to make their life easier. And we want for them to build uh, great applications quickly and uh, with less effort. So we provide this database perspective and which comes really handy and you ask, okay, but uh, what is the database that I'm going, I'm connected right now? So this this one right now is uh, the default one, the in not in memory, but H2 database uh, that uh, we have uh, as a default one, as a backup uh, variant, actually. So if, if you have not uh, specified through the environment variables that I've shown previously, which are part of the setup, uh, concrete uh, database uh, with a database URL and so on. The default one will be used. Actually, we have uh, three types of databases that we support. The local one, which obviously is the H2, uh, dynamic data source binding. So you can actually write your code to dynamically create a data source and it will be listed here and you can, after that, inspect it. Or a custom one, which uh, is expected to come from the cloud. So basically we mimic what it can, it can be done in, in the cloud. So let's see, I'm going to create a table, customers, it will have an ID, primary key, uh, it will have also first name, it will be voucher, 32, Last name, again, voucher, and uh, H. Okay, let's execute it. Yeah, I forgot that it has to be integer. Okay, and as you can see, my customer's table is now created. It has the exact same columns that I have defined. And if I go here and say show content, it will say that uh, the results are empty. So what we can do, uh, I can write one with SQL script. So the last name and the age. Okay, and if I query the the customers, I'll have this record here. Let's add a few more. So Jane Doe and Joe Doe. Let's see them again. Okay, so right now I have one, type, one table with uh, three records, which is uh, pretty cool for a demo scenario. So let's uh, continue to the next perspective. This is the repository and actually this is a perspective where you can, it's more like operational perspective, but here you can find all published projects. So this is uh, the project that I have and the content, uh, the hero.js uh, file. And here I can see all logged in users and their workspaces and their projects, okay? Then the next one is really standard. So it is it is a, a terminal. And as I'm running right now on a Docker container, it has uh, this uh, Docker container path right now. But if I'm running locally and I've gone through the setup in the right way, I will be able to execute commands on my machine. So the next perspective is actually for managing a document. So in Dirigible, you can upload for various results, some documents, 
And for example, these documents, uh, if uh, the dirigible is deployed in the cloud, could be stored in a S3 bucket, bucket or other CMIS compliant protocol. It, uh, you can uh, create some constraints, so certain files to be visible only for cert certain uh, roles. Uh, the next perspective is uh, some kind of collaboration perspective and here you can ask questions and interact with uh, other developers which are using this instance so it could be used some kind of uh, log for instance what he has done what and we have this operations perspective where you can find all of uh, dirigible configuration as you know, as you can see there are plenty right now applied so they're like 90 at the moment and you have various tabs for the various artifacts that we have for example data structure success roles and so on okay so let's uh, switch back actually to the workspace where we will spend most of the time right now so <coughs> uh, what i'm going to do now is to show you one more api that digital has so let's jump to the help portal and then to the sample sections actually so here if i go to the search and type query as you can see it will be a database query i can just copy the whole content go to my workspace create new create new uh just uh just give out a second new javascript service which will be query.js i'm going to replace the content right now and uh i want to fetch the data from my customers table actually and it will not receive any parameters so this should be fine if i click if i hit a uh, command space or control space i should be able to see the result in the preview tab and by the way if i copy the url i should be able to open it so as you can see it's in localhost and this is some kind of dynamic restful service so it is uh, returning results depending on the data that has been put into the database this seems fine, but uh, what if I want to create actually a more complicated RESTful service, one that has, you know, the whole CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete, all of this. What, uh, how should I do it? Should I, maybe I can give it a try with response, get method, uh, actually request, yeah. So this will be request. Require and here will be the request API, and here I can type request request get method actually to determine the the method, but uh, it will be a lot of files and switches, so it's not a good idea. So let me just show you that it will be returned okay so you can see it's a get method but this i don't uh, want it and i don't need it okay let's delete all this so i'm going to create actually a separate javascript service just to show you and i'll name it service.js okay and i'll switch back to the samples and hopefully here will be something ah Yes, we have a RESTful service here. Okay, uh, here is the sample code. I can just copy it and replace here the service.js file. And okay, I have the same result, hello world, but this time with exclamation mark, it's not a big deal, really. Quite an improvement, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to delete these comments and I have this actually another path which seems interesting. I have hello, let's give it a try. Hello slash some name, let's say you're done. Okay, and it will 
actually take the query param the path parameter uh, from the requested path. And in this case, this is your run. So this seems more like uh, like um, something that I can build really an, an RESTful API on top of it. But um, I don't really want to specify all of this select from customers, uh, get by ID, delete, and all of this. So I want to find something more easily and something more um, useful. And, you know, so if I go back to the readable.io and actually this time to the API section, yeah, I know that I'm cheating. It's not part of the samples, but hopefully one day we'll put it there. And if I search for DAO, which stands for data access object, I can see that here we have one API, which has uh, all of this uh, insert, list, find, update, remove, count even, create and drop table functions. So this seems really nice. Okay, I'm going to copy this, uh, <coughs> this content here. And let's give it a try. So it is the DAO API. It asks for the table. In this case, it's the same. So it's customers. Uh, the Actually, the first parameter, the name of these properties will be the name of uh, how it will be serialized. And if you noticed right now in the query, the one that we executed here, they are just returns uh, as the database names. So this is not really good if you have uh, different uh, databases, for example, like uh, Postgre, which are always uh, using uh, lowercase um, <coughs> names for the tables and for the for the columns, and you don't really want to rely on this. Uh, so what you can do, you can introduce a name for the property and a binding to the column, and under, underneath the will take care for whether it is H2 or Postgre or HANA or something else. So the type of the attributes or the property here is really an integer. The name, the next one will be actually the first name, and the column is first name. Then we have, I think, a last name, and a column of last name, and a type of varchar. Okay, so we have also an H, property H, and this will be an integer. Okay, good. So we have this uh, customer's DAO actually definition created. And then what we can do, if I go to the API, I can see that it has a list, actually a list with uh, query settings, but I want to list all of them. So I can just go here and type customers.list and it will be related data. So I will say response set content type to application slash JSON. And then I'm going to replace this one with uh, JSON dot stringify and dot date. So hopefully this will work if I click on the service JS and if I just open it in a new tab. So I have this uh, really cool parser. I can see that uh, this time the ID was, is with lowercase. Uh, there is no slash between the first uh, in the first name, and it uh, really looks more like a REST API. This time, okay, good. So, what else? So I have a different path which I'm most probably I'm going to use for the delete method, and I can just grab this and copy it and say, okay, at this path, I want also to have a post method. So it will be something like uh, like this. So it will be not data but entity, and it will come from the request get JSON. Okay, and then I'll say customers dot 
insert entity, which is an JSON format. And what else? If I cheat and go again to the <coughs> to the DAO definition, I can see that it actually returns something. And in this case, uh, this is the ID of the inserted uh, entity. And here I can not like JSON, but I can say something quite uh, uh, entity with ID equals like this. Let's create it. Okay. And next, uh, I'm going to create the delete functionality. So I'm going to change this uh, handler from get to delete. So you can really specify and define RESTful APIs to through this uh, RS framework that we provide. And you can define the resource paths like that and then the respective handlers. Okay, so for the delete handler, it will take the ID. So from it will be part of the context parameters and it will be like that. And then I can say customers.remove, which is again another method here. Or you can delete all of them if you don't provide it. So be careful what you do here. I can provide the ID. And then I'm going to save some time, copy the message. Okay, so this seems legit. Uh, the service is still accessible. So now I want really to execute the post method. So I'm going to switch to postman very quickly. Okay. And what is important here, actually this is running on my local host, but it has some kind of authentication mechanism. So I'm going to use uh, some kind of a hack, dirty hack, <laughs> and just take the JSON, the session ID from here. Of course, if you deploy it on the cloud or if you configure it to run us uh, uh, together with um, all authentication, you can create uh, uh, your, you can get your token from the old server and call the digital APIs, but as I'm running locally, and this is with form authentication, it's not even basic, it is form. Uh, so this is the only way that I can call it. So I'm going to the cookie section and replace the cookie value. Okay, save it and let's give it a try. Hopefully this will work from the first time. Yes, okay. So the list of uh, customers are being returned. And uh, what I can do, I can just quickly copy one of them. And I can switch the method to post. It will be on application JSON here that we're going to create. So the ID is actually auto-generated, so we don't need to specify it, but I can give my names here. And let's let's try it. Hopefully it will return something. Yes, entity with ID one was created. So if I call my RESTful service again, I can see that actually the first entity is the one that I've just created. And if I now execute, for example, a delete method with ID, for example, John Doe, which is 1001, I can switch the method type to delete, and then I can execute the query and the entity with ID 1001 was deleted. Let's try it. And yes, that is the correct result. Okay, so just to confirm that there is no any magic or mockery here, we are going to see the customer's content. And yes, these are our three results right now. Okay, this uh, all seems great, but uh, what else I can do with dirigible? So actually, 
for some simple data. Uh, I can delete all of this. And uh, as you can see, it is empty. And I can create one special type of artifact, which is uh, exactly named as the name of the table. In this case, it's customers.append. And you, you see what is going here. So it will be some kind of a <coughs> CSV import. So let's say 10,001. 10, and this will be John Doe, again, 29. Okay. And if I save it, it will take a while, but in the end, the data will be available here. So it will import my sample data or for example, some kind of nomenclature data into the database. And yes, here we have uh, our sample data imported. Great, but if you remember this uh, one flow in the beginning of uh, this project, and that was that I've really created a database from a SQL script here in the database console, console and uh, it's not really the way that we imagine how things should be done. So what I can do, I can uh, really say something like this, uh, drop customers, drop table, of course. And if I go to the workspace again, I can create actually a new database table and it has this dot table in the end. And you can name the file whatever you like, but I'm going to name it customers. And if I open it, I have this editor here where I can define my table. So for example, this will be the name of the table will be customers. I'm going to create another property which will be the first name. So basically the same table as before. Save it. Okay. Last name. And finally, the age. Okay, I can save this table and I can just right click on the ball and hit the publish button. In most cases, um, the artifacts are out published, so you don't even have to bother with that. But in some cases, for your own, uh, you can just publish the project. So if I go again in the database perspective, here are my customers table created one more time. Okay, so right now they're empty because uh, the, the data was already imported in the previous table, but uh, that doesn't matter really because I'm going to update this dot append table with one more record and this will be Judo. Okay. And after a while, yes, my content is here. So let's uh, try our APIs where, whether they're still working. So the query API is returning the results in the same way with uppercases and uh, columns. Uh, the service API is uh, maybe working as expected. Let's see here. Yes, it is like that. And if I try to delete, for example, John Doe. Yes, this will also work. Perfect. So uh, what's next? Hmm. What I'm going to do now is to show you another dirigible sample, which is uh, really interesting and it allows you to generate a pdf reports out of your data so let's uh, go to the sample section search for pdf and create this so 
at the first moment it's kind of scary because it has all of this uh, data and fields and what is going on here but it's uh, really simple and to show you that i'm going to just copy the whole thing and here remember that uh, this write and set header and set content type are really important so don't miss them and just copy the whole thing and i'm going to update my service.js and i'm going to actually add one more uh, method and it will serve for the print path it will be a get and i say i'm going to copy it again okay let's paste it here just like that okay fix the formatting a little bit okay it doesn't matter at the moment so the response is not needed here we have this uh, api and yes we can not only import them at the beginning, but at any point of your code. So we have this data and uh, the title of the generated PDF. I want it to be out to time. And the description will be getting that with Eclipse visual. Okay, so the clones that are going to be printed in the report are ID. Okay, I have this one, first name, perfect, last name, and age. That's really great. And here we have some sample data. So I'm going to delete this one. Okay, and what I can do instead is to say data.rows are equals to my customers dot list so as you remember this is the customers DAO that is working on top of our database table the customers table and you can just fetch all of the data like that so the rows will be populated and if i save it and everything uh, works like expected and if i go to the print um, path hit enter and I can see that actually a PDF report was generated for me and it has all the columns that I've provided and just to show that there is nothing fake I can just remove the ID column save it one more time and voila we don't have the ID right now just the list of the customers okay that's great so uh what next oh yeah maybe we'll have to go to the cloud in the end as this is uh cloud two times not localhost two times mm, i'm going to the git perspective and if i click on the repository that i have I, I can see that i have also a staging perspective and i can check out my unstaged files so i can see what is what are the differences and all of these are new files so hopefully if i add all of them and i say uh, demo content like that and commit and push all of this hopefully it will went to my github repository which was uh, cloud 2010 yes it is there all of it perfect so uh what is the next part actually i'm going to copy this url of the git repository I'm, I'm going to need it and switch to one cloud uh, instance that i have at hand actually this is uh running on a cloud foundry environment uh, on the sap business technology platform but it can run anywhere of course and in this setup i have bound to my dirigible instance a uh, postgresql service and how i can check that i can go to the database perspective and you can see that now the type of the database is custom it is not local 
even if I switch to the local, I won't see anything because it is bound to the uh, <clears throat> custom data source and in the name it is Postgre. And if you still don't believe me, if you go to the service bindings of that service, which is some kind of a cloud found, found return, you can see that I actually have this PostgreSQL database binding. Okay, <coughs> so hopefully, and let's see. Okay, so I have this customer stable. Obviously, I've uh, done some experience before, and but I can drop it. And you can see that I don't have customers right now, but what I can do, I can go to the Git uh, perspective, I can clone this project, it should be dot git. Uh, this will be cloned, and I can switch to my workspace, publish the project. I think it it was out to publish, but just in case, and Hopefully, let's start with the whole world. Okay, it is still working. It is now in the cloud. It's not localhost. Uh, let's see the query JS. And oops, you see that uh, relation customers does not exist. And this is hmm. Why is it like that? Maybe I have an idea. And yeah. Okay. So in Postgre, and here you can see the beauty of JavaScript. I can do like that single quotes and put the customer's table in double quotes and voila, we have <coughs> the data and we have the same service. It is running on the cloud and I can say print to see the result, the print result. And it's basically the same application, but now running on the cloud. And if I can uh, share the link with you guys and you have uh, accounts in the SAP Business Technology Platform, you'll be able to see the application that quickly. Okay, I think, uh, yes, these are most of my demos. And let's uh, switch back to the presentation. There's, okay, so we've been through all of them. Actually, so the next step is what's next, really? And uh, what's next is uh, that I have another session on uh, 1st of June about local development with Eclipse Dirigible. And there I'm going to show you <coughs> how to develop applications even quicker than uh, what you've seen so far. So we can just with drag and drop deliver applications in the cloud that quickly, as you see. Okay, so I think right now it's time for questions. Thank you, you're done. It was a very uh, thorough introduction. Thank you for the, the demos, they were very useful. Uh, just a reminder, um, for anybody attending, please ask your questions in the uh, ask your question section on the bottom, or you can just drop it in chat as well. Uh, in the meantime, I do have a couple of questions for you. Um, my first one is, um, what is the relation of, of Dirigible to Thea, Eclipse Thea, the, um, the IDE platform? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we in kind of close relationship with them. Why? Because we're part of the same, so we're kind of sister projects. We are part of the same top level Eclipse uh, project for uh, cloud tools, actually. Uh, I, I could say that uh, actually in a Deltro, in Deltro Deltro, maybe you know, know him. He is officially the first founder of Dirigible, the really, really, the father of Dirigible, I would say. And he's also leading this uh, uh, top level project for cloud development tools uh, in Eclipse. And uh, we have regular meetings with the tech guys. We exchange some ideas and components even. As you can see, the terminal is exactly the same as the one in the in the TEA 
um, platform. And uh, we're in that kind of uh, relationship with them right now. Great, thank you. Let me check any other questions. Um, can, can, can you run Dirigible on-premise? And, and a related question in that, uh, how many customers do you already have, if you're allowed uh, to uh, share that information? Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> okay, let's start with the first question. Yes, you can run Dirigible locally or on-premise. Uh, you can do it as a Tomcat setup, which you can see on the dirigible side, on the dirigible help, or Tomcat, and you can run it as a Docker container. So, for example, if you have some on-premise um, Kubernetes installment or Cloud Foundry installment, you can run it there as a Docker container on your on-premise uh, cloud, basically. And about the second question, uh, we have few adopters so far. We have some big uh, customers, but uh, we can't say names, of course. And we have uh, some small one partners, which are also using Dirigible. And if I go, let's see if I could find it. Uh, adopters, I go to the adopters page. And I can see that uh, actually Clips Dirigible was officially adopted, or at least the one that I wanted to be listed here, from Digital Lights, from SAP, and from Symmetric. So this is actually the public information that we can share. OK. Um, last question from me, anyway, would be, um, You know, can you write Java code or JavaScript only, or or what else can you do? What else? What other languages can you work with? Mm, okay, so the 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 language that you are using inside the platform inside Dirigible is uh, JavaScript, but actually underneath it is running on a, for example, on a Tomcat uh, application server in a Java process. Actually, so Dirigible is a. Uh, mm, Java running on the on the cloud. So let's go to let's go to Maven. And here you can see that we have a lot of dependencies. I think uh, it was close to 300 uh, lately, 260 or 270, something like that. And you can actually build your own dirigible. You can provide your own Java facade. And uh, let me quickly show you how Alpha State looks like. So if I go to the database API, which is kind of low level, but very similar to the JDBC API, you have this connection, prepare statement, execute query, get string, and so on. It has uh, two important files here. We have the JavaScript API and the Java state. So if I switch to the JavaScript API, you can see that uh, it uh, go back to the um, underneath Java and call the classes by fully qualified names. And if I go to the facade itself, I can see that uh, this is really some Java code that uh, the JavaScript API is using. So you, you see all of this uh, get data source, connection, prepare statement, result set, all, all, all of this is already familiar for you. So you can just uh, grab your Java code and you can build your own facade. And later that you can use it in Dirigible, for example, for generating PDFs. But yeah, we have already such a API. Great, fantastic. Um, so thank you very much, Jordan, for today's presentation. We're looking forward to having you back at the start of June for a deeper dive on the drag and drop and other capabilities within Dirigible. So uh, we will see you then. Um, okay. In the meantime, just to, uh, some housekeeping reminders for everybody here. Um, our next cloud tool time is on April the 20th.
Um, so it's just a few weeks out. And um, the topic will be diagram editors in Thea and VS Code with Eclipse GLSP. Um, and that will be by Philip Langer. Um, we have another upcoming event. It's called Cloud IDE Day, and that's for anybody um, working in, in the IDE space, uh, whether you are working on, on traditional IDEs or moving into the cloud or related technologies. And that's on May the 19th. Um, we'll post in a link with more information about that. It's already there, as you can see. So please check that out. And if you have an interesting topic, please submit it for, for that event. Um, and also please sign up for a future edition of Cloud Tool Time via our registration form. Um, so thank you all for coming. Thank you all for participating in our community. We have lots of other content coming up. Uh, so continue to uh, follow us on Crowdcast and on the other usual channels as well. And we look, we look forward to seeing you again at a future event. Thank you very much.